In this video, you'll learn how to use the Megascans library to create one-click drag-and-drop asset libraries within Blender 3.0 quickly and efficiently. The Megascans library is no secret to the CG community. It's one of the only libraries that has a full platform built out that allows you to one-click export materials, objects, all kinds of things like that into your 3D program of choice. It's an incredible option for working in all kinds of different softwares from the basics of Blender, which is free, all the way up to Houdini. Today I wanna to focus on using the Megascans library to build asset libraries within Blender uh, as in Blender 3.0, they added an asset library feature that will allow you to sort of save and create your own uh, sort of folders of assets that you can one click, drag and drop into any project that you're working on in Blender. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at exactly what that looks like. So to get started, we obviously only really need two things for this video. We need the Quixel bridge as well as a Quixel slash Megascan subscription and we need Blender. If you don't have the Quixel Bridge already, go ahead and go to quixel.com slash bridge and you'll be able to download it. Um, I have Bridge open here. And upon first launch of Quixel Bridge, you're gonna be prompted to set up some export settings. And I'll bring mine up at the moment. I have it set to export to Blender and the Megascans plugin is already installed in Blender. Now, you will need to go ahead and do that, but there's just a little button that uh, you'll click here that says download, and then you'll click install, and the uh, the Quixel Bridge plugin, or the Megascans plugin rather, will go ahead and install into Blender. Now, for Blender 3.0, as of today, which is 2.14.22, uh, Megascans is not actually officially supported in Blender 3.0. So what you're gonna have to do is come down to your search bar and type uh, percent app data percent, and that will just open your uh, app data folder in your computer. And what you're gonna wanna do is go into Blender Foundation, Blender, and then in any of these versions up here above 3.0, go into the folder, go to scripts, startup, and in here you'll see uh, MS plugin, which stands for Megascans plugin. Uh, you, we, we can back out of that and you're going to want to copy this whole startup folder. So copy startup, come into 3.0 down here, go into scripts, and then just paste it. And uh, that will uh, save you some headache and some errors when getting started with Megascans in Blender 3.0. Uh, but now we should be ready to go and you can go ahead and download an asset just to uh, verify that it works. I'll just download this modular wooden tunnel start slash end. And then if we export, it'll say exported to Blender successfully if you've done everything right. And if I come over here and hit my render view, we can see that uh, I, have, I have this asset here with, uh, all its textures and everything, ready to go. So that's how we get started. I'm just gonna delete that. So that's great and that's really easy on its own, but we wanna take it one step further today and utilize Blender 3.0's new asset browser feature to build file systems and categories that will allow us to one click, drag and drop these assets into any scene that we're working on and uh, maybe even let us edit them and kind of put our own spin on everything. Maybe you want to retexture an asset and you can save it out just like that where you can drag and drop it for any project that you're working on. So first to do that, what we're gonna need to do is come up and actually uh, drag out a new window here. I'll just drag out uh, another one. So if you just come down to any corner, you can drag it out and it'll bring up a new window and come up to this top left-hand corner here and you're gonna to wanna to change your editor type to Asset Browser over here. And everybody's should look the same um, as Blender kinda of opens up and it opens it up in this current file uh, setting here. Now, Blender's asset library is not quite as intuitive as some of the other 3D programs out there. Hopefully, um, we're kinda of just waiting uh, on some time and development there because this is brand new with this last uh, version of Blender. And so uh, with time, hopefully that, that will improve and this will become a little easier to use. But for now, I'm gonna show you the two things that we have to do 
to uh, get get assets showing up in a browser like this where we can organize them for whatever we want. The first thing that we're going to want to do is come up to Edit Preferences and come down to File Paths. Now you'll see that I already have two asset libraries created. I'm going to add another one and I'm going to come into my hard drive where I keep all of my databases. So I'm gonna come into my Blender folder and you can put yours wherever you want. You can put it in your documents, on your desktop, on another hard drive. Um, and I'm going to create a test library. And that is what is going to be uh, my library for this. I just created a new folder. I'll click Add Asset Library and I will call it Test Library. You don't have to name it exactly the same thing as you name the folder. Um, you can name it whatever you want, but now our file paths are set for this asset library. And if you come up here to this current file, um, uh, we can come down and see that our test library is now showing up. Um, obviously there's nothing in it, but it is created and it's ready to receive some files. So let's go about kind of building that out and telling Blender how to find the files that we want to use. To do this, we have to do two things. And so I'm gonna go into where I just made that folder um, and you can go to yours as well. So we're gonna have to put a file in this test library that is full of the objects that we want to be considered assets. Um, and so the way that this ties into Megascans is we can just add in all kinds of assets that we want, whether it be um, actual geometry or materials or whatever we want and we can just save that file in here and then the second part of getting assets to show up in the Blender library is marking things as assets and so let's build our file and save it out and I'll take you through step by step and then uh, we should be good to go ahead and make some pretty killer asset libraries. So I'm going to minimize that for the moment and open my bridge back up in this little window right here. I'm going to get rid of my default cube um, and I would recommend that you do the same, although you don't have to because we don't have to mark everything that we want as assets. So let's say I wanted to create an asset library full of rocks. Uh, and then we can go into 3D assets and I will download a bunch of rocks and we will uh, go about creating a rock asset library. Um, so all of these are from you know, similar collections or they're rocks and maybe I wanna use them in whatever project file um, I have. And so I will go ahead and export each one of these individually into my Blender file as things get a little messy here. Export that one, and that one, and that one, and now we should be good. Okay, so now we have a lot of rocks here, and I'm just going to do some organizing. Now these will automatically import at their uh, default or appropriate or maybe physically correct size, and so I'm not actually going to resize them. Okay, so that's good. And we can hit the render button up here and see that they're all textured and ready to go. So let's say that these five rocks are the rocks that I want to include in my rocks asset library. The first thing that we need to go ahead and do is save this project file and we will save it in the file that we put our Blender asset library in. So I will save mine in test library and I'll call it rocks, but it doesn't really matter um, what you name it because as you will see, if I refresh my test library here, Nothing has shown up yet, and that is because there is a second step needed to add these into a library, and that is to come up here and grab all these and right click and then mark as asset. And now you will see in just a moment when everything updates in my folders here that we have these pieces of geometry and likewise their uh, textures once this updates. Uh, let's do R, what, X90? It's textured, I promise. There it is. Um, 
we have these assets and their textures in our asset library here. So all of these are drag and drop. We can create as many instances of these as we want. And so now what we can do is go about categorizing this because uh, that is something that is going to be very necessary when it comes to uh, building out asset libraries. So uh, we can create what are called catalogs. And so if you come over to this all, on the far right here, there's a new asset catalog button. And you can create a new catalog and rename it. And I'm going to call mine nature. And then within this, you can make subcategories. And you can, you know, in theory, go with that as deep as you want. And I will call this rocks. And so then if I come back up to all here, or also unassigned, I can grab all of these and drag them into rocks. And so now if I have nature, and then my rocks are also here, they appear in all, but will no longer appear in unassigned because they have been assigned to rocks. Now, one very important part of this is this little asterisk here is letting us know that this project file has not been saved, and thus uh, we will lose all of this, and Blender will not remember if we don't save it, so I'm going to go ahead and save this project file again. And so now we have an asset library that if I go File, New, General, and delete my cube, I can come over here, or rather here, and bring up an asset library window, or an uh, asset browser window, sorry, and come into my test library, and I have rocks that I can one click, drag and drop, already materialed, uh, misoriented, but uh, in my project all the same. And these are high quality assets, obviously, Mega Scans is the best. But what about materials? Let's say I wanted to add uh, just the material from one of these assets into my uh, asset browser as just like a, a nature material that I want to reuse from time to time. Well, I can do that too. Um, I'm going to select uh, this rock because maybe I want to keep this material, this Nordic beach rocky material. I can come up into my nature uh, category that I made, and I'm going to make another subcategory and rename this to nature materials. And so I can save my project file, and now this, uh, this materials library will be synced, and we can open it in other files just like we just saw. And I can come down here into my material shader, and I can right click right here and mark this as an asset. And so now if I come up into all, we will have a little preview of our Nordic beach rocky texture. And I can drag this into my nature materials. And so then we can build whole material libraries. And so you can see from even just these simple examples how this can get very in depth and you can build some crazy asset libraries that allow you to work much faster, much more efficiently with any kinds of assets that you may work with on a daily or you know project basis. And how the Megascans library can aid you in building those and so you don't even necessarily have to upkeep that. You can just save everything that you want and build your asset libraries and then and then you're good to go. You just have all the assets that you use on a daily basis ready to go in one click and you'll never have to think about it again. If this video helped you at all, I would appreciate a like. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, same with comments. If you have any questions, please leave them down there. I'm very quick to respond. Um, I pretty much look at my comments all day. And so uh, if you have any questions, you can leave one there or shoot me a DM on Instagram. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Again, if it helped you, I would greatly appreciate any new subscribers. I do appreciate uh, everybody who um, is subscribing and is interested in the stuff that I'm putting out. Um, so 